a lot of roleplay is about shipping, and I don't think you look cool pretending that it's not. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about plotting romance. It's February, and in honor of Valentine's Day, all month we're going to be having romance and relationship-related videos. Except, of course, for our Zodiac installment. Don't worry, Pisces, I have not forgotten about you, I've not bumped you down. So to get started, we're going to talk about romance plot structure. I recommend watching my plot structure video first, and I'm going into this assuming that you already have. So if you haven't, I do recommend watching that first, and I'm going to link it up in the card for you. So we're going to talk about how to apply that plot structure to a romance roleplay. So let's get started. Romance doesn't get a lot of respect. It gets ragged on in literary circles, and I'm sure that you have all heard, roleplay is not just about shipping. Well, you know what I have to say to that? While it might technically be true, a lot of roleplay is about shipping, and I don't think you look cool pretending that it's not. Romance or shipping plots are probably some of the most common types of plots that you'll find in roleplay, but I also think they can be just as challenging as any other kind of plot, especially before you apply a structure to them. So what makes a plot romantic? Romance is all about a main character finding happiness with another person. Typically, they end in marriages or they're maybe sealed with a kiss, and the couple gets together. So remember our parts of the plot. We have introduction, rising action, climax, falling action, and conclusion. Let's use the second season of You as our example this time. Yes, it's a romance, despite subverting a lot of the themes of that particular genre. And I just finished watching it, so I want to talk about it. So spoilers for season two of You going forward in this video. During the introduction or exposition phase, we establish who our main character is and who their love interest is going into the story. In You, Joe has changed his name to Will and just moved to LA. He also got a job at this local like bookstore slash grocery store type place, and he is introduced to our love interest, who is named Love. We already know our protagonist from the first season since this is the second season of a show, but we need to be introduced to where he is now. We learn he's trying to be a better man, and he doesn't want to repeat the same obsessive behaviors that got him in so much trouble during season one. We also learn a little bit about Love. She is a manager at this new job that he's got, and it's owned by her family, where she basically co-owns it with her brother. We are also introduced to several other key characters, but I don't feel the need to spoil the whole season to make the points that I want to make in this video, so we're just going to kind of gloss over that. Essentially, in this introduction or exposition phase, you should see three things. Who the characters are, what their goals are, and why they should or shouldn't be together. The introduction should establish some desire or missing piece that is inside the protagonist that the love interest might fulfill. Think of crafting your characters like puzzle pieces that fit together to make each other whole. Next, we get to our rising action. This is the fun stuff. This is the meet cute or the montage of dates or the couple's first fight. This is all the stuff that pushes the couple together, then apart, then together again, and back and forth until you get to the climax. In You Season 2, Love ends up mostly pursuing Will during this time, because remember, Will is trying to not be obsessive like he was in Season 1. During this time, Will becomes friends with Love's brother, Forty, and he also commits to being just friends with Love for a particular amount of time. Because remember, he's trying to not be obsessive like he was in Season 1. During this part of the plot, you can have as many conflicts as you like for the couple to go through to change the dynamic of the relationship. The thing to remember is that every conflict must either grow the relationship or sabotage it in some way. A romance where the couple is constantly being pushed apart, however, can feel unrealistic. You start to ask yourself, why are we even rooting for these two to get together? Conversely, a romance where the relationship is constantly growing can get boring, so find a balance that works for you. For example, Love introduces Will to her family in episode 5. This results in a couple of things. Um, her mom hits on Will, they have an argument about Forty's addiction issues, and then Candace from season 1 shows back up. This all culminates in Will telling Love that he loves her. 
In the next episode, conflict arises again when Love finds out that Will has been lying to her and his name is actually Joe. At this point, the couple breaks up and we don't know for the next few episodes if Love and Joe are going to work it out and be together. A lot more happens, of course, that I've not touched on because I don't want to spoil the whole season for you. Suffice it to say, in romance, often the rising action takes a long time to get through because there's lots of bumps in the road for our couple. But eventually, we land on the climax. This is the event that seals the fate for the couple. Will they be together, or is their relationship doomed to failure? In You, after a series of bad decisions, Joe ends up trapped in a cage with a dead body of his friend that he believes he killed. Unfortunately, he also has no memory of doing so. But then Love shows up. At this point, Joe decides to tell Love the whole truth, particularly all of the things that she didn't find out before when she found out that he was using a false name, especially the fact that he's a murderer. At this point, all hope is lost. There seems to be no way for the couple to recover. Love knows all of Joe's secrets and he assumes that she hates him now. Turns out that she doesn't and she's actually a murderer too and even does a couple more murders to help protect Joe and prove that she cares about him. And this is what the climax of a romance must do. It must seal the couple's fate as together or separate. The thing that the characters were missing out on individually should fit together like a puzzle piece. The couple either completes each other or realizes that they don't need each other to be whole. Next we have our falling action. In You, Joe finds out that Love is just as obsessive about her love interests as Joe is, and in fact, she was stalking him. There's also a whole bunch of other plot threads that Joe and Love go through tying up together because of course it's a TV show so there's lots of plot threads going on at the same time. Um, I didn't really get into this in the video because it wasn't necessary to spoil the whole thing to make my point, but that's essentially the falling action in this show. And then once all of those loose ends are tied up, we come to our resolution. Love and Joe get together. Love is pregnant, they buy a house together, and they live happily ever after as two murderers. Now, we're of course talking about role plays, and there can be a tendency at this point to keep going. So make sure when you're plotting with your partner, you both at least vaguely know what the ending is and why that's the end point. If not, you end up continuing the couple and they just lead a domestic life and it starts to get really boring. Or maybe you keep having conflicts and you start to wonder, why are these two together? Of course, this can happen with any roleplay plot, but I feel like romance is particularly subject to it because it can be hard to let go of a good ship. And the more character bleeds you might experience with this, the harder that becomes, so be cautious. I recommend if you have a ship you really like, when you reach the end of that particular plot, start a new one with the same characters. Maybe you do a supernatural AU, or they're in space, or they're in college, or they're co-workers. The possibilities are endless, but I find romance so much more satisfying when it has an actual ending, and then you can just play the couple again in a new scenario. So this is how we apply that five-stage plot structure to a romance plot. Next week, we're going to dive a little bit deeper and we're going to start talking about romance scenes. I recommend watching my videos on goals and tension, both of which I'll make sure are linked in the cards somewhere around this time, because that's going to play into how we craft our romance scene. Do you like romance roleplay? If you do, let me know your romance plotting experiences down below. I would love to hear about them. And don't forget, make it a great day.